friends, it's Miss Jenna with Mount Lebanon Public Library. This is Mini Makers Halloween Edition. Today we're going to be creating experimental art projects all based on the pumpkin. I have a couple of pumpkin books here that helped inspire my creations and I suggest that you find a book with pumpkins in it that will help inspire you as well. So go ahead, get your books, read it, grab your art materials and let's get creating. To get started with our pumpkin patch, we have to create the pumpkins. Now pumpkins can be all different sizes and shapes, and I'm going to try to cover up my paper with as many as I can. So I'm using watercolor paper, which is nice and thick, and which will help absorb all of the water that I'm going to be using for this project. I'll start with my pencil, and I'm just going to draw some really, really rough shapes. I know I like some pumpkins that are nice, big, round, fat pumpkins. Maybe I would like a tall pumpkin, a squash-like pumpkin. Maybe I want a sort of shorter and fatter pumpkin. This one is going to be more of a square-like pumpkin. And maybe I have a really teeny tiny one. And then I'll do one that's kind of silly. It has kind of a fat bottom and a skinny top. Now, depending on the age of the student, completing this project, the pumpkin shapes might be a little wonky and I really love that. So encourage your child to create their very own shapes of pumpkins. It's okay if it's not perfect. It's okay if it doesn't resemble a pumpkin because they are using their fine motor skills and they're creating it all on their own from start to end. Next, what I want to do is I'm going to outline my shapes using permanent marker. Now this is not a step that you have to use, but I do like it because it defines the shape and it will not be washed away with the water later on. At the same time, I might add my stems. So this stem, maybe it's a little bit blockier and I go around with my circle. So essentially I used a square on the top and I close it up with a circle. This is much more of an oval shape and I don't have that much room on the top. So maybe I'll make this more of a hook. I have my um, horizontal oval. And since I have so much room, why don't I make a really big stem on this one? I have my square-ish pumpkin with the rounded corners. And I'll do sort of a flat um, stem on that one. I have my little guy here. He's gonna have a tall stem. And then I have my sort of pear-shaped pumpkin. And I'm going to give this guy a really long hooked stem. So I have my pumpkin patch. If you have an older student that would like to make a more realistic pumpkin, a suggestion for creating that would be to have a circle that you kind of rough out with pencil. And then if you start with an oval in the center, and then you sort of connect ovals to varying sizes. So we're going to be making the ovals smaller and smaller as they go toward the end, and then you create the stem. So you have the ridges that are on most pumpkins. So you can also create a pumpkin that way. But I like my flat pumpkins. After you have your pumpkins all drawn on the page, it's time to add color. So I have a number of different materials that are listed on the supply list. I have a watercolor palette, I have my water cup, I have a paint brush, I have um, some other things that are a little bit, um, something that you might find in the pantry at home. I have some baking soda, I have table salt, and then I have two containers of colored water. So you can use a food dye or you can use a liquid watercolor. And I added some water, but then I also added some white distilled vinegar, and that's going to be important for a chemical reaction later on. In addition to these paints, I also have some washable markers because we're going to be using those as well. So there's really no one way to do this. Basically, I'm just going to start with my experimentations. And I want to maybe start at the center one and grab a color so pumpkin colors are traditionally orange, right? We have orange, we have yellow, we have white pumpkins, but as the artist, you can choose whatever colors you want. So if you want a black pumpkin, if you want a green pumpkin, go ahead and do it. As an artist, 
You shouldn't feel like you have to work within the constraints of someone else's directions, especially when this is supposed to be fun. I added um, lots of water to this and I spread it all the way around. And maybe I wanna add another color now. Maybe I'll add some green and I'll get that in there. And what I'm going to do, since this is nice and wet, I'm going to just put some little dots on my pumpkin. And what's going to happen is it's going to bloom. So the paint, the pigment that I'm adding to the red, I'm adding water in the um, green pigment. It's actually following the water and it's sort of blooming, it's opening up. So that's a really fun thing to watch. If you have a child that's a little bit older, maybe you can show them a method of splattering. So I get my paintbrush nice and full with some water and pigment and I hold it horizontally over my page and then I tap, tap, tap with my hand. So I'm able to splatter the paint onto my paper without also splattering the walls and the table and everything around me. It's really fun to do this. The more water you add, the easier it is. As the paper absorbs, it's going to get lighter and lighter so you can do more and more layers on top. So maybe that's all I wanna do with that pumpkin. I'm pretty happy with that pumpkin um, and I wanna move ahead. So on the next pumpkin, I'd like to do something a little more scientific. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some of my baking soda and I'm going to kind of put it on my page. Now you might want to have a, like a little spoon to do this. Um, I'm going to add just a little bit kind of in a line. So I want to kind of spread this so that it's in a bit of a line. It's kind of like my um, pumpkin has a necklace. I have these eyedroppers that I'm going to use to take the pigment out of my distilled vinegar cup. And you can use a straw to do this as well. If you just put the straw in and then hold the top and then pull it out, then the, um, the pigment and the water and the vinegar will be inside there. You can also use little spoons or a paintbrush to do this. But I really love to squeeze my eyedropper. And then I'm going to just put it right on top. If you listen carefully, you can hear the chemical reaction when the baking soda and the vinegar touch each other. And then it's making this awesome bubbling all over my pumpkin. It's like I'm creating a potion. And because there is pigment in the vinegar, it's still going to stay behind like a painting. And maybe I would like to add a little bit of my blue color on top. Whoops. So you see that my vinegar is now pouring off of my pumpkin and I'm fine with that because I have this lidded tray here that's going to keep all of my mess inside. Now a third method that I like to show you is using markers. So I'm going to choose my color of my traditional orange and I'm going to color inside here. Again you can squiggle, you can do whatever you want but I think I'm going to do some kind of concentric circles inside. And maybe I'll choose another color. How about light blue? I'll do some light blue. Maybe I wanna do a little bit of green. And if I use my paintbrush with my water, it's a little bit blue now because my paint, that's fine. But I'm going to add water to my magic markers to create paint. So I love to use washable markers and water as paint. It's just, you have the control of the markers um, and then you also have the ability to um, make it solvent so that it turns into paint. So it's a really dynamic material, but it has to be washable watercolor. So we have one more pantry item here that I'd like to use on my pumpkin patch and that's the table salt. So for the table salt, I'm going to have to use lots of paint and lots of water on one of my pumpkins. So why don't I do like a magenta pumpkin? So I'll do it on my pear pumpkin here. So I have some magenta, maybe I'll have put some green. Maybe I'll create a little bit of blooming with some purple, do some dots. And I'm making sure to get my pumpkin nice and wet so I have a little bit of pooling here where I can actually see the 
watercolor flowing with the paint. So what I'm going to do now is use my table saw and I'm just going to get a little bit of a pinch and then pour it on top. So you don't want it to be a mountain of salt, but you want it to cover the surface. And if we look really carefully here, you'll see that the salt is actually absorbing the watercolor and the pigment. And what's going to happen is when this dries, you'll see the space where the salt was. And so it's this really beautiful crystallized little spots of texture on your pumpkin that will kind of look like the surface of the moon. When your watercolor experiments dry a little bit, you can start to add some more texture with your magic markers. I added lots of dots and some stripes over here. You can also experiment with some transfers. So I have some bubble wrap of different sizes and I'm just going to color right on top of my bubble wrap so that I cover the surface of the circles with some ink and you can turn it around. Let's put on this one. I'm going to press down very gently. I don't wanna pop the bubbles. And you see that it transferred and left the circles behind. When you're all finished with your watercolor experiments and your experiments are all dry, you have a couple of different ways that you can display your pumpkin patch. Older students might want to add some pattern to the background. So I just added some line that bubbled around each of the pumpkins. And then I drew line within each line and I tried my best for the lines to not crash. And it creates this type of effect, which my son calls a maze. Another way that you can display your pumpkin patch is to cut them out and to put them all in a line. You can also cut them out and put them on black paper or colored paper or watercolor experimented paper. It's totally up to you as the artist to figure out the best way to display your artwork. Thank you for creating with me today, and I hope that you created lots of pumpkins with a ton of personality.